With the conflicts of season one being over with, and with Cooper winning the presidential election on February 13th, the Broken Nation was ready for a new season. They are ready to rebuild their Broken Nation and make it more prosperous than before. But some had different ideas. Some had dark plans for what was supposed to be the nation's brightest days would soon turn into its darkest hours. This is the story of Season 2 on the USM SMP. Season 2 started out a little bit bumpy, with a few minor things that happened, like the inauguration being erupted and a few minor crimes that were committed. But after getting used to the new president and seeing his great work ethic and his willingness to help the people of his nation, people started working and rebuilding their country. Oh, and uh, you see that tall wood tower in the back? That is Caleb's new house he's building. It goes all the way up to block limit and literally everyone hates it, but that's not important. For now. The early part of season 2 was all about expansion. Expansion to the new part of the city that would later be known as downtown Willowfield, and some technological advancements with some new weapon. A bridge was even constructed by myself and Zanger to the new part of the city. It would later be known as the Holy Bridge, because when one of the members first saw it, they yelled out, Holy Bridge. But on February 14th, things would take a slight turn that would ultimately almost destroy the country, almost ending up in a civil war. On February 14th, Brayden was put in jail for a crime. Nothing major, but he had to serve his time. But then, he broke out, without anyone noticing. And then, Caleb, former Mafia member, accused Brayden of vandalizing his home after escaping prison by placing random blocks on the walls of his home. The court found him not guilty of the charges, and soon after the court disbanded, another case was brought to the judge. Landon accused Cooper, the president of the country, of shooting him. Cooper was found not guilty of the charge, but in the court, in the heat of the argument, a small fight broke out, and Cooper was charged yet again with assault, but this time Xander was the victim. Then Caleb assaulted Landon. Cooper was yet again found not guilty of the assault on Xander, and Caleb was found not guilty of the assault on Landon. Even though no one was found guilty of any charges, people were still getting in small skirmishes and fights with each other. Brayden had reached a breaking point and what pushed him over the edge is unknown to all of us. But, out of nowhere, he started committing multiple crimes, and much larger ones than his previous ones, such as multiple accounts of shootings, and even almost killing the president and the sheriff. Brayden, after going to prison for this, became less respected in the area. Even the people that fought with the mafia were more trusted than he was. After almost killing the sheriff, Brayden had to attend another court meeting, but, this time he didn't show up, which worried some people knowing that there was a shooter on the loose. Someone that was known for committing mass shootings was out there and they had no idea where he was. And because Brayden refused to come into court, he became an outlaw. And as soon as he entered the USM's borders, he would be detained. But that's not what Brayden had in mind. But before Brayden could do anything, Brayden was kicked off the world. And for the same amount of time as he was going to be put in prison. After this though, Land started acting a little weird, even almost committing crimes, like going into people's chests, taking things out, putting them back in, and threatening to steal them. But then a little later, Land did call Colby over to his house, saying that Brayden contacted him and told him he should. So he did. And what he found out was horrible. Before Brayden was able to get his loot, run away from Willowfield, and escape from the country's borders, he went to Colby's house and blew up the back of it. Colby was angry, angry that one of the people he fought alongside in the war tried to kill him, tried to kill his friends, and the president. He destroyed his home. All that went through Colby's head was revenge. He always tried to uphold the law and keep everyone safe, even if it annoyed people, he knew he was doing the right thing. And he learned from his mistakes, and he improved himself. But no one cared. And when most people would be sad and complaining, Colby was thinking and counting the ways he could enact revenge. He was angry, and he was at his boiling point. They didn't even have a court meeting yet, but it was apparent that Brayden was the traitor. Brayden burned his home. But Landon stepped right up and admitted that he was the one that did it, and that... He should be punished, not Brayden. But Colby felt like it was all wrong, 
and that Landon always felt like he was a follower to Brayden. Even when Brayden was always in the wrong, there was always Landon defending him, so it didn't seem right. Colby thought Landon was taking the blame to cover for his friend, but he was conflicted. He wanted to enact revenge on whoever did this, but if it turned out to be Landon, he would be ruining someone that was family to him. But yet, he did it to him anyway, so did it really matter? What was he going to do? During the investigation, Brayden admitted to the crime. This changed Colby's perspective. The fact that Landon was covering for a crime as big as arson on someone of political power was weird, and it made Landon a very untrusted person, knowing that he was friends with the biggest outlaw in the country, and he was willing to take blame. If he was willing to take blame for something he didn't do, nobody knew what he was really going to do. Colby had had enough. It was time to signify that he would stand for traitors and he wouldn't tolerate terrorism. He knew what he was about to do might have consequences, so he decided to have a discussion with the president. And ultimately, Cooper announced Colby was pardoned from his act of revenge. And that act? Well, Colby was going to destroy Brayden's house. So he grabbed TNT, he grabbed his flint and steel, and he marched up Brayden's stairs. He set TNT all around the house and set his house on fire, which lit the TNT, and exploded the house. The explosion was so large, even the top of the mountain was destroyed. And Colby felt justice was served. So he and the rest of the members carried out their normal lives, Xander and Caleb working on their homes, Cooper making sure all was in order, and Colby expanding and building towards downtown Willowfield. But Landon... He was acting very strange, still seemingly defending Brayden, and Landon would talk to Brayden about what they should do next, and since Brayden was not welcome to the USM anymore, he had Landon do his dirty work, and would even try to clear his own name from the whole situation. The mastermind of the next event in the storyline was about to make Landon look like the villain in the story, working by himself. February 15th became known as the February Attacks, but not just for Brayden's act of terrorism. No, something bigger was coming. Hours after Colby blew up Brayden's house and it was all settled, someone sneaked up to Caleb's tower and set it on fire. Colby spotted it, but he wrote it off as Caleb getting rid of it, since it was basically a joke to the whole server. But after Caleb said he never touched it, a court meeting was called, and the point was brought up that it could have been lightning, but that was quickly trashed since the fire started from the bottom of the building. But the court meeting didn't go anywhere, so Colby started interrogating everyone, but he couldn't find any solid evidence on who it was. But 20 minutes after the court session ended, Colby realized the direction Landon came from when Colby met up with Landon. He came from Caleb's house. So he called another court meeting. Everyone showed up except for Landon. So Colby went to go find him, but what he found was his house was on fire, but almost the entire thing was covered with flames. He saw his stables were gone, and his horse that won the Medal of Honor for saving Colby's life was dead. Colby knew that since Lan was the only person not present at the meeting, that it was him. So instantly Colby kicked Lan off the world. When Colby was rebuilding his house for the second time in 24 hours, he thought to himself, Though Xander and Caleb were in the Mafia, they had no real intention of mass destruction, and still he betrayed them. But now, the people he fought alongside and betrayed for, they destroyed his house, and most of all, they destroyed his trust for them. And he thought to himself, he risked his life for these people and his country, the people in this country, but he still got broken. He realized that the Mafia was actually better than what the USM had become, but Colby, though very angry, didn't hate Landon, and he didn't hate Brayden, and he didn't hate the USM. After rebuilding his home, the first thing he did was release a video forgiving Landon for what he had done, and he said he would welcome him back to the country with open arms. Landon then replied with his own video of him apologizing to Colby and Caleb. A day after the attacks, Landon was welcomed back to the world, but he had to be on probation. He had to work and help build the new downtown area of Willowfield that was finally starting to take shape, and he had to be monitored 24-7. But now, Landon, from that point on to the end of the world, became an extremely respected citizen of the world, and from seasons 3 to 6, he had one of the best 
crime records out of anybody in the entire country. The rest of season two was amazing. Downtown Willowfield got dozens of new buildings, expansion continued, and Cooper continued to work on the new city that was recently established called New War. And there was almost zero crime. Season 2, just like the last, ended on a great note with every conflict being solved. Season 2 ended on March 8th with the re-election of Cooper Gregory as president. But after this, no one really joined the world and season 3 didn't even start until March 15th. And when it did, it was just mostly Colby and Caleb rebuilding the country from all the past destruction that happened in the past two seasons. But on April 24th, after Cooper's term had ended, they had realized that Cooper never really was on during his term, and no one was running for the next election. So pretty soon after that, they realized the only person running, Caleb, would become president by forfeit. And after this, the season picked up a little bit because on April 26th, work began on the country's capitol building, and on April 28th, he and Gickham joined the world for the first time. After this, the middle of the season was filled with prosperity and expansion, and around May 4th, work on the first military base started. Then on June 15th, Benny joined the world for the first time. Caleb then proceeded to punch him off a cliff and kill him, and the small manhunt started, but it ended pretty quickly. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. I really appreciated it. Don't forget to like it, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you know the next time I post a new video. Thanks for watching.